Lord, your loving kindness is better than life. Lord, your loving kindness. What would you say is the ultimate act of patience and kindness? The cross. Mark over there says the cross. Because it is without doubt, and to anybody who truly understands our Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the work, of, because of the Spirit within us, it's going to attest to this. That is the ultimate, absolute act of patience and kindness. Jesus went to the garden the night that He was taken, right? And I'm sure you all know the account. The soldiers came to, to take him away. And Peter drew his sword and cut off the ear of the first man who was trying to take Jesus Christ. And Jesus told him to put up his sword. And then he stopped and he healed that man. You know what he said to Peter? He said, don't you know that he... I'm paraphrasing what Jesus said. He said, don't you know? I could have asked my father. He would have sent... 10,000 angels. It doesn't say 10,000. It says legions. And a legion was about 6,200 Roman soldiers. So he, he was saying he could have called He could have called upon the Father and the Father would have sent 72,000 angels to deliver him. Angels are not, are not little wimpy looking creatures in prom dresses. Angels often came as incredible mighty warriors. Right? But Jesus, he said, I could have called upon my Father, and he would have sent those angels. Why did he? It was because of his love. You know, I, I've heard all these debates. People talk about, you know, Jesus, when he was nailed to the cross. Well, they didn't put the nails through his hands, because then they, they, that wouldn't have held him. And they say, so it must have been through the wrist. No, no, no. It wasn't nails that held Jesus to that cross. It was love that held Jesus to that cross. He went to the cross because of the love of the Father who sent him for that purpose. Isn't that what he said to Pilate? It was for this reason that he came into the world. What else does it say? Well, he said he went to the cross for the joy set before him. So he went because of love and he went because of joy. He went because he had a perfect peace about what was about to happen, and he knew fully what was about to happen to him. Because when he came out of that supper on the last on that last night, he was singing hymns. He was singing psalms to the Father. He was at peace with what was about to happen. But he was patient, because there's an appointed time for him to come. A lot of people are studying the book of Revelation, or maybe probably not even studying more, but just listening to other people and going to movies and reading novels. and The fact of the matter is, even Jesus did not know what time the return would be. But he was patient, knowing that this God's Father, his Father, had a perfect sense of timing. It was an appointed time for his return. I said one time I was praying, and it was like I had a vision. And I'm just, you know, being in the presence of God in heaven, and just seeing this, there is the Father sat upon his throne, and there is Jesus next to him. And all of a sudden, and this is going to happen one day, I mean, there are myriads and myriads standing before the throne. And the Father says, turns to an angel and says, get the horse. It's time. A lot of people talk about the four horses in the apocalypse. I'm looking for the fifth horse. I'm looking for the, the white horse, listening for hoofbeats beats in the sky, because he's coming. So, but it was because he had the patience that he was willing to, what is the other word for patience? That's exactly right, long-suffering. He was willing to suffer through all of this to accomplish the Father's purpose. And that, that chain, that link from love to joy to peace to patience led to the ultimate act of kindness. There on that cross, beaten and battered and bruised, there was Jesus Christ, and as he hung on that cross, he looked out and prayed to the Father. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That was the ultimate act 
of kindness. There is none other that will ever happen greater than that. This is the example. We are to be imitators of God, beloved children, as beloved children. Isn't that, that's what it says in Ephesians 5.1. You want to imitate Jesus Christ? Well, you have to operate in that fruit of the Holy Spirit that God gifts us with. The love, the joy, the peace, the patience that leads to the kindness. And it is gentleness. Because the opposite was, he could have smashed everything and been done with it. But he chose not to. Jesus said, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me.